Alberts, that's our word, brought to you by our unpaid sponsor, Isomia One and Sovereign Tech Podcast, the hottest tips on tech and the hottest takes on movies. Uh, this podcast is covered by a Creative Commons Zero license. No rights reserved, but all mites reserved. Uh, also, uh, we are also sponsored by Delicious Delicious Negro Modelo Cerveza. Remember, next time your Mexican eatery reopens, be sure to tell your waitress, Negra, please. And uh, I'm your host, Jim Jesus, and here we have uh, the... Un- the former anarcho yakitalist is that right? Yeah. Nick yeah, Hazleton? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep, I'm here. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I don't know. I don't call myself an anarcho yakitalist anymore, so we can say former. Mm. Are you I still an anarcho yakitalist? I don't know if I'd even say that. I'll still say anarcho, but uh, maybe yakitalist is what I should use again. I, I try to not, I try not to tell people uh, names anymore, you know? I don't, I don't. Like, what do you believe in? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I just don't want people to mess around with my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what I try to give it to. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, I, when people ask if they, they, they pin me down, I'll say anarchist, anarchist, anarchist. Yeah, I have a hard time telling people that I'm an ar- anarcho-capitalist because they immediately jump to, oh, well, then you support the NAP. And, oh, you must be for Austrian economics. And it's like, well, no. Because it's the first two things that pop in people's head when you mention that stuff I'm yeah like, well, first of all chicago school and chicago gang <laughs> <laughs> yeah chicago gang consequentialist gang uh yeah yeah so <laughs> so i always do that but i'm like i'm like I, I'll, I'll issue qualifiers i'm like well i'm an anarcho-capitalist but i'm not the uh, nappy-headed lulberts you usually see around the internet <laughs> yeah like, oh that's yeah. interesting tell me i I'm intrigued by your ideas, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter. <laughs> speaking, yeah. speaking of intriguing things, how is the yak farming going uh, during uh, this time of delicious, delicious Negro Modelo? <laughs> it's terrible. No, no, it's uh, <laughs> it's like uh, the the main reason why it's not been going well recently is the state changed rules. So, like right before all this happened, um, they changed what I'm how I'm allowed to do it. So, luckily, I think I'm I think we'll recover and change the way we practice it's complicated stuff i don't really want to get into it just the 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 state government sucks they don't do their job they're a bunch of bureaucrats and they and uh they mess around with people's livelihood and they don't really they don't really live up uh they don't they don't take responsibility for really? it but anyway that's that's, that's, uh, that's unheard of i've never right, heard of the government right? doing anything like that. Uh, that's ridiculous <laughs> ba- yeah right basically they changed they started regulating us more than they used to because they they didn't realize that that was part of their job Ooh. They they have laws that they're supposed to hold up that they you know was were written a long time ago about the way that animals are supposed to be processed and slaughtered into meat you know and then uh, they forgot about it and so they were letting the feds do the work um, and and follow their own regulations and they just kind of the yaks and bison and alpaca we all had a loophole that we didn't didn't have to go through the USDA inspection processes oh, no. but it turns out. It turns out, according to Oregon law, we uh, we were supposed to. But all these inspectors from the Department of Agriculture said it was fine. And uh, last year, they they, uh, they they hired a new guy, and uh, he realized, <laughs> like, oh wait, you know, we have a law here we're supposed to follow that supposed to put all these animals through an inspection process. So, you know, the last six months have been kind of figuring out well, what do we do about that. Um, Maybe they'll change the laws back. A lot of people were pretty upset in, in Oregon about it, but um, um, I'm, I just have now I can get a USDA inspection service, so I, that's what I'll try to do, and I'll be back to selling yak meat this summer. But uh, otherwise, I haven't been able to. So, like you know, I don't, I don't really have a reason to go out to into public to try to sell meat anyway. But uh, um, I and I'm just at home now, you know. I, I just the the still have the yak still have the pigs and um it's given me some time to you know the break from marketing has given me time to do more uh systems management building infrastructure like making the fences better and and trying to figure out how we can do things more smoothly with like feeding hay having it in different spots where we don't have to 
get hay all over our gravel driveway. Mm. Simple things, like little things like that. So it's been kind of nice to be able to work on shit I like to figure out. But uh, nothing's really been going on with the yaks. Like I had a new calf last month, but yeah, no, I'm I'm kind of bummed by that. But it's no no more asshole yaks it. doing bad things. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No more asshole yaks. <laughs> Yeah, they're not running around the neighborhood, so I don't. It's it's good when I don't have a whole lot of news about them. <laughs> God, yeah, not having any news is good news, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, I had to had an, add an extra horn to my collection. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, otherwise it's been good. Yeah, so uh, obviously you can't go to farmers markets now. Pro- probably that was the well, case a little bit before then. Yeah, and it sounds like they're going to open them up uh, this month still. I guess they're, uh, Oregon got approved, or some of them here in Oregon got approved to be essential services. Oh, nice. um, but but I don't think I would do it anyway, honestly, just because I, you know, I don't know what's going on. I don't really want to catch something. Um, I'm trying to be relatively careful and didn't just sitting there dealing with people. I, I just don't. I just don't know if I would want to. I don't think I'd want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, this is delicious, delicious Negro Modelo. So it's nutty. And I keep seeing people going like, oh, it's just a flu, man. It's just a flu. I'm like, no, it's not the flu. <laughs> it's really not the flu. <laughs> it's something else. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know if we should talk about that. Um, so, like, the flu, um, when you're talking about the flu, you're looking at a, what is it? I guess, what is, what is the RO rate of that? I forget. It was something like, like one I point, I figure it's like one or something like that, where it's like uh, the chances of you getting it is like like one yeah, percent or something like that. Uh, like you know, so if I have the flu and I go into a room and I hang out a bunch of people, the chances are I'm going to infect about one percent of of the people in the room just by you know coughing, touching things, or whatever. Whereas delicious, delicious Negro Modelo is double that which is two percent which if you look at on the paper it's like well that's not that much more but if you look at the long-term effects of it you know if i infect twice as many people in a room they're going to go off and infect twice as many people and they're going to go off and infect twice as many people so it like it spreads more rapidly and sure like the flu has a death rate too and you know the death rate uh, you know are we're pretty much equal right now with the uh, delicious delicious negro modello but considering that um uh, considering that it's it's still like ten, what is it, ten percent higher or something like that, or was it? I have to look at the numbers. It's like I'm a ten percent, sure. like it's like or ten times the uh, like ten times the kill rate of the flu, oh. which sure two percent, and it's only going after the the disabled and the elderly, and uh, we're all big fan of Sam Hyde because you know in twenty seventy <laughs> the elderly and the disabled aren't going to exist anymore because we're just yeah. going to kill them. Like <laughs> yeah. sure. Um, whatever but like you're still like looking at a, a large population of people who are going to be maimed and injured and also old people are people too come on man um yeah I, I was uh i was having this conversation with someone earlier and they were like oh no no it's it's just the flu and it's like no it's not the flu and it kind of yeah. makes me wonder like um like how would this work in anarchy land if we don't have systems in place of shutting everything down and I'm sitting there going like I don't I can't imagine like any any kind of like uh, homeowners organization or deed restricted area or any kind of business organization or insurance company that would allow any of these businesses to run and still be insured in an anarcho capitalist society while they're still running during a, like a worldwide pandemic, which is rare, which only happens what once every hundred years. I think that was the last one we had one was just a Spanish flu. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the ones before it were kind of small. Yeah. My dad's on the phone in there. He's got, he's got a, I didn't realize he had a work call over there. They're, they're figuring out how to build dildos over there. Did I, I've ever told you that that's what my dad does now. Should we talk about that on the program? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. I can. He's yeah, he's a he's okay. cool fighter to talk about. It. Okay, so um, uh, so yeah, 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 like we, we had some audio. I mean, <laughs> compared to the audio issues that we've been having lately, where just people just drop out randomly, uh, this is a lot better having someone talking in the back room about dildos. But what, what was that about? <laughs> what, wait, what dildos? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so my my dad uh, he's, he's been he's an engineer. He's an industrial engineer. Um, so he it is past careers before he was a school principal director um he did um kind of systems management how to set up a factory for um starting to build components to machines right so he like worked for a small startup that built the um 
the gears that move in and out the uh, the d- CD disk drives and computers he used to mm-hmm. do stuff like that. Um, but so recently, one of his buddies from college, um, he's made a bunch of money on some other project that he 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 got rich off of, and uh, he started. Uh, uh, well, he met a, met a woman and and she had an idea about uh, a sex toy, a female stimulation device, and. Um, she wanted to make it. He had the money. They just decided, well, let's fund this. And they called up my dad. They're like, hey, we're going to need somebody to help us set up a factory if we're going to do this. Uh, are you down? And he's like, well, I don't know. It's uh, And he's like, well, we're going to make a lot of money off it. So um, decided to help him. And it's a cool business. It's uh, Uccellini. I'll type it here. Uh, U-C-C-E-L-I-N-I, I believe. Mm-hmm. And it might, that's probably two L's or something. But um, Laura Haddock started this company and uh, came up with an idea uh, for a new, um, they don't say dildo, it's a, a sexual stimulation device. Um, and it's kind of interesting. It's called OSE, O S E with an, uh, an, uh, an accent. Um, but it's an interesting device and they're starting to sell it now and you can go online and find it. And, uh, it's a pretty cool device. Like, it, um, some of the engineers that, uh, Laura DeCarlo.com oh crap, at, at Oregon state university, they, uh, they helped design it and it's kind of, they're trying to do like biomimicry so they can like, uh, <laughs> mimic somebody's finger, you know, stimulating the G spot. Uh, it's interesting. I don't, I don't know anything about these. <laughs> this kind of stuff, but uh, uh, I love to give them props when I or press when I can because I think that they're they're cool people. Laura is uh, Laura's a good person, and uh, they're a very interesting company. Well, um, our our fans definitely like to purchase sex toys from time to time. Which I don't know, maybe we should get into Amazon reviews. <laughs> like I was begging for someone to be like, okay, because we used to do uh, we're well, not Amazon reviews, but uh, we used to go through all the things that people bought on Amazon, and I said I would do it. And we, this probably probably said good episode to start doing it again if you don't want to be on during that we can't uh, we can just do no, it afterwards as an after show um that's fine. i don't mind but i was always like when is someone gonna buy butt stuff when is someone gonna buy butt stuff and then i did a show with baron <laughs> like one of the last shows i did with baron um someone actually bought like some little it was like a seat and then it holds a dildo underneath it and it has like little rubber <laughs> or elastic straps so that you can bounce on it and i was like <laughs> we did it we did it <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> That's fantastic. And we're all sitting there like, wait a minute, who would buy that? Where did that come from? What a yeah. weird thing to buy. <laughs> no That's judgment. So I mean, we don't know who bought it. It doesn't tell me who buys these things, but it's kind of like, right. what an interesting thing to buy. <laughs> that's cool that's 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 really cool yeah I, I, i'm yeah i'm not judging but it's just it's just like a, i've never seen anything like that i thought it was kind of bizarre uh in that sense not like ooh, how dare you degenerate whatever, whatever no sure yeah i've, I've never heard of a that's a brilliant contraption yeah so while everybody's going like oh i don't know what to do man it's, i can't i can't go out and get girls or whatever and it's like well you should have bought butt stuff <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because now you're at home and you don't have anything. Way to go. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty interesting. I'll, 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 I'll post links in the doobly doo for that. But yeah, that's yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty crazy. So all in the day of a, of a yak farmer, uh, you know. That's right. <laughs> going out, checking on the yaks, dealing with the USDA and making dildos. Yeah, as you yep. do. As you do. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, so how else is impacting you or sorry <clears throat> I, I blinked that out because <laughs> I, I mentioned the wrong brand of cerveza uh, I was talking about of course delicious delicious Negro Modelo which is what I meant to say uh, so has that affected your ability to go out and look for mushrooms because you're too uh, hung over on delicious delicious Negro Modelo <laughs> yeah, yeah that's what it's doing yeah no I mean that's the that's the fun thing about my life is I'm I'm already socially distanced or you know I, I don't I don't normally go into town. I don't normally talk to a whole lot of people. So I've just been out here doing my own stuff, going to town less. Mm-hmm. I, it has given me more opportunities, actually, because there's a lot of old, uh, older people in the, in the neighborhood that are, you know, some people are have a compromised immune systems and don't want to take the risk to go into town. So I've been able to uh, do that for people. And, and that, you know, brings a little bit of cash my way, makes my trips to town a little bit cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um which is cool, and uh, it's been fun to to meet more people through that. But uh, 
Uh, I don't really get to talk to them very much close to face to face. I just kind of wave at them as I drive by, as I you know drop off something and keep yeah. moving. But yeah, otherwise it's it's the same old, same old. Yep. I don't know. I've been getting cabin fever as of lately. Um, the reason that we talked about a bunch of ways to stay sane during during a delicious, delicious Negro Modelo night. Um, <laughs> Like I, uh, I I just binge watched uh, a great show which I highly recommend called Tiger. Was it Tiger King? Have you heard about this? Oh, yeah, which, I've been hearing all about it. I, I, I want to know how that may affect your your line of work, considering that I guess they could <laughs> oh. consider that exotic. Exotic, yeah, it's, <laughs> it is true. Yaks are considered exotic species. They are not not oh. livestock. Oh, that'd be too bad if they come and shut you down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not as crazy as those people. <laughs> Yeah, like there was no good guy in that. No good guy. I had seen that guy a long time ago when he was running for for Senate or um, or uh, president. I don't remember what he was doing. It must have been Senate for Oklahoma because that's what I heard he's been doing. But I'd seen him before d- making ads and going off about shit. It was it was really funny. It was a few years ago. Yeah, they they mentioned that in the uh, in the documentary. Like it spanned. I think. I think they were recording that since like 2016, and it kind of wrapped up in 2019 when he went wow. to jail or something like that. Um, yeah, so the, it's about this guy named Joe Exotic, who is one of many kind of like private zoo owners who specialize in big cats, tigers, lions, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and he kind of started out with noble intentions. He started out going like, you know, it's wrong, you know, that these there's like these private breeders and there's like an underground market for these things. Uh, you know, and I just want to make sure that these, you know, animals are safe or whatever and, you know, let the public see, you know, what they are and whatever. And that evolved into him breeding cats just to get little kit- kittens and cubs so that he could, you know, have people come over and pay top dollar to take pictures with the with the cubs. Um, and, you know, he gets connected and he sells, uh, you know, those wild cats down the line and. Because, like, the cats are only useful. They're monetarily only useful up until they become adults. And then once they become adults, they're just dangerous. And you just can't have people standing next to them because they'll just maul them to death. Um, <laughs> but when they're cute little cubs, like, oh, the girls want to look at them and hold them and pet them and pay top dollar to take pictures with them and all that stuff. So, you know, they end up, like, just start euthanizing all these uh, these animals. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, no. And... Uh, there's like a big underground market for them and they're kind of talking about all of this stuff. And then at the, at the other side of it, you know, they have like the, you know, the quote unquote good person, uh, who runs the, the, the big cat rescue, who rescues them, rescues all these cats from all these, uh, pay to play, uh, zoos or whatever, but she's not good either because it, I mean, if you look at the evidence, it's pretty clear that she possibly allegedly murdered her husband for money uh, <laughs> yeah. and is doing the exact same thing that they're doing. But, you know, they're just doing it very differently. And so instead of like having like this weird kind of underpaid cult or whatever, of you know, of, of workers uh, and making them work all the time, you know, for little money, she just basically has volunteers where they do the exact same thing. Uh, you know, she still keeps them in terrible cages instead of running, letting, letting them run free, which she complains that other people do. Like everything that she, she complains about them doing, she does, except for breeding. Like that's the only difference. And they're just oh, wow. having like this constant war with each other all the time. Uh, you know, like all of the, the private zoos and her. And. Uh, then there was eventually a murder for hire plot against her by Joe Exotic and it landed him in jail. <laughs> it's just a big, wow. and Joe Exotic, he is a, what is it? He is a gay redneck, uh, second amendment supporting, uh, polyamorous zookeeper with a mullet. <laughs> yeah. He and, looks awesome. <laughs> yeah. And he's, oh, and a meth head. And so is his two husbands. <laughs> uh, then you have the other guy who is like a like a playboy um, cult leader who like thinks he's like a friend of God. He calls himself uh, the, uh, the Ragnish. He calls himself a Ragnish or whatever they're called. Bhagavad uh, or Bhagavad. There we go. <laughs> Ragnish was a Bhagavad. <laughs> he was yeah. Osho. Um, yeah. Uh, who else did you have? Did you had you know the crazy lady who poss- you know allegedly murdered her own husband for money. Uh, then you have, um, then you have the, uh, the, the prototype for Scarface, <laughs> who was like a Coke dealer or a Coke, Coke runner, 
uh, in the 1980s who they possibly used as a uh, model for for the movie Scarface. <laughs> it's just like, what is even happening here? Like these are like the weir- the worst people in the universe all getting together and going, hey, we should get big cats. Yeah, right. That's such a, that's so interesting that they can that they can find that commonality is these people want tigers <laughs> and they're all ripping each other off. <laughs> they're, they're all <laughs> trying to fuck each other over. And it's just insane. Wow. That's pretty nuts. I only know one guy that owns tigers and I, I've, I've not really spoken to him much, I, but he was, uh, he's a very tripped out dude. I, when I, the way I learned about him is I was trying to figure out where there were psychedelic mushrooms in the area of Corvallis. And if you look up, you know, I don't remember what it was, but if you look up psilocybin around Corvallis, you'll find papers that this dude wrote uh, hmm. about finding them. And, and now he, he lives in Seattle. His name is, uh, I think he's whatever he, he's, he's out there. John W. Allen, and uh, he uh, he has a he has a few tigers. And uh, what's interesting is I only he seems like he's had them for a few years, but they only seem to be really young. You know, they're like pretty small tigers. Hmm. So I'm gonna have to look into this, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. How if that's does he a good keep idea. a tiger? I don't know if it's a good <laughs> idea to have tigers and uh, mess around with psychedelics. I just don't think those <laughs> no. are a good combination. <laughs> no, probably not. Especially since uh, I mean, that Joe Exotic thing uh, at, at his zoo, like one of the workers, Sober, by the way, Sober stuck her hand inside of a cage and uh, got ripped off. Yikes. Mm. <laughs> oh, jeez, man. Ma- imagine if you were playing around on psychedelics, man, and you were just like, oh, oh man. God, just like, oh, like, oh, it's a big fuck. fluffy tiger. Yeah, just <laughs> ripped it off. Oh, it's so crazy. Oh, wow. You probably wouldn't even notice it and just bleed out to death. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah, pretty nice. That seems like it would be such a, that would be a hard thing to handle. Like, that's something I think people misunderstand about big animals, especially predators, is that they are so much stronger than any human being. You really cannot mess with them hand to hand, you know. Yeah, I can't believe. I, I just couldn't imagine trying to keep something like that in a cage either. I would. I would be not. Not even just like the being concerned for the health and the wellness of that animal, but just thinking about like, man, if I ever have to get it out of here, how how am I going to deal with that? Yeah, you know that's that's a scary thing. Yeah, the the uh, weird thing. I mean, if you get. I mean, do you have a cat? Have you ever had a cat? Yeah, yeah, and they they can be terrible. They can yeah. be terrifying. <laughs> Twenty, you know, ten pound cat is still something to not the not to mess with. Yeah, I mean, cats are slightly domesticated. They're not completely domesticated. They're for the most, they're mostly wild. But even still, imagine if your cat was just you know t- twenty times bigger and weighed four hundred pounds and was taller than you, <laughs> yeah. but just walked on all fours. Uh, your that cat would kill you. <laughs> yep. Like any, the only reason why time. your cat doesn't kill you is because it looks at you and goes, "All right, that could kill me, but uh, this is not going to stop me from trying to chew on it." <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they're brave little things. That's uh, we we had a kitten last year, and he's grown up to be a pretty ferocious barn cat. And he's you know he has his sweet moments, and he's really adorable, and we we've, we've treated him well, so he likes us. But he just has that trigger, you know, it switches, and it's like kill, kill, you know. And he doesn't he doesn't care how big you are until you start you know smushing him or something. And then you know if you if you fight back, then he then he knows it's like okay, this thing's bigger than me. I can't I can't fight it. But he can do a little bit of a uh, uh, you know hit and run. Because he's fast, <laughs> Hit and run. but imagine, yeah, like imagine if he was even a hundred pounds. Like that would be like like cougars out here are about a hundred pounds. The mountain lions here, like that's that would be that'd be so terrifying. A fifty pound cat would be nuts. Yeah, mountain lions are not are nuts too. I would not want to cross one. No, no. <clears throat> yeah, but it's an interesting show. Highly recommend it. I guess it's going crazy right now because everyone's locked in their house and they have nothing better to do except watch <laughs> Netflix. And that show just blew up. And there were some other things that were also happening with Joe uh, outside of that, and it just kind of blew up as well. So I want to know, I, I like, want... are they going to implement new laws over this? Or are they going to try to get the Big Cat Act passed? And what other ones are they going to overreact on? Because you know how Congress goes. They're not going to just pass that bill. They're going to be like, oh, let's add a bunch of other pork and uh, nonsense to this bill, because that's what they do. Yeah. Um, are they gonna? Are you gonna get affected in preventing you from selling yak meat? Delicious, delicious <laughs> yak meat, <laughs> raised in uh, delicious Negro Modelo, of course. 
Yeah. <laughs> that, that would be interesting if they use that to, to change some things about owning exotic animals. That would be that would be that would be rough. Yep. <laughs> I hope that not. Would be rough. I, I wonder if everybody kind of identifies. You know, everybody's locked up and in, inside, right? Or you know, staying inside. I wonder if people are identifying with the tigers. <laughs> That's why it's being so popular. <laughs> so, like, let's look at other people who are locked up. Yeah. Speaking of it, like, um, I got this article that I wanted to talk about last week with uh, who did I have on last week? Was it Jeremy? No, it wasn't Jeremy. I don't remember anymore. A cabin fever setting in. <laughs> yeah. Whoever I did the last show with. Oh, David Lucar. That's right. Uh, so, like, Politico did an article saying that the DOJ seeks new emergency powers amid <laughs> our delicious Negro Modelo pan- pandemic. Mm, delicious Negro <laughs> Modelo. Uh, Justice Department has quietly asked Congress for the ability to ask chief judges to detain people indefinitely without trial during emergencies as part of a new push uh, for powers that comes as the novel uh, delicious, delicious Negro Modelo spreads throughout the United States. Mm. Uh, Negro, please. Delicious uh, documents reviewed by Politico detailed the department's request on to lawmakers on a host of topics, including statute of limitation, asylum, and the way court hearings are conducted. Politico also reviewed and previously reported on documents seeking... Uh, the authority to extend deadlines on murder reviews and prosecutions. Are you getting ready for this? This is this is this should come at a shock for you. Uh, a Justice Department spokesman declined to comment on the document. Yeah. What? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Obama. <laughs> like I can't stand that they they do that freaking bureaucrats. Like, hey, you just you just did something that we're kind of interested. in. No comment. Yeah. <laughs> It really affects the way my business is run and what I'm doing in my day to day life. No comment. Yeah. <laughs> gotta gotta talk to a lawyer first. Yep. And uh was it the was it the uh, the, the governor of Nevada here? Uh his the, the, the chief medical officer or whatever they call it, uh, I don't know what they what they call him. Um, you know, like claims to be a doctor. Uh he hired him because he's a doctor, but He's not a doctor. He actually has no like formal medical training at all. I guess he was somewhat of a doctor in India, but not really. Um, and they hired him. And then the first thing he did after this delicious, delicious Negro Modelo um, pandemic happened was to say, hey, um, we're going to ban these two drugs that people are turning to to alleviate, alleviate their ailments um, because there's, you know, some moderate you know, information to show that these, you know, could help with the symptoms or help, uh, you know, tide it back a little bit. We're just going to ban them, uh, because one person died because instead of getting the, you know, the, the medical grade stuff, they got like the stuff that you buy for fish cleaners or for fish tanks. (laughs) (laughs) That's so ridiculous. Which on the packet (laughs) says not for human consumption. (laughs) Jeez, uh, some people. Those people had to have been from Florida. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. They probably run a big, big cat wildlife refuge, and <laughs> probably wanted some money from that particular person. Like, oh yeah, here, take this. This will, this will cure you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. This is, this whole thing is nuts. Uh, again, like I, I don't, I don't think like. In in Ancapistan or Anarchy Land or whatever, there would be there would be like similar things happening where they'd be telling everybody to stay home. This is uh, this is not good. But uh, but to uh, just be like, oh yeah, we're just gonna have like these draconian uh, legal rules now, and we're just gonna detain people without without court dates and what else? Did, what else did they say? Uh, to detain people indefinitely without trial for uh, during emergencies. That's a bit crazy, which is weird because what is that? That one girl that was, uh, she showed up at a, at a grocery store and started coughing and sneezing on all the foods and started making statements like, "I'm in, uh, you know, I have the delicious, delicious Negro Modelo and I'm going to give it to all of you, um, you know, and, and I'm contagious or whatever," and started coughing and spitting and and sneezing on all all the food and they had to throw out. Was it like thirty six thousand dollars worth of food? Not to mention oh all the time uh, that they had to pay all the employees to clean it up and and all the the stuff they had to buy to sterilize everything and reopen right, the store. Probably has pay and stuff. Yep. Wow. Um, 
you know, she got a speedy trial. She even though it was in the back of a cop car over the phone, but or drive through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, if we, if we can do that. Why can't we? You know, why do we have to detain people indefinitely just because they want to enjoy some delicious Negro Modelo? Yeah, right. No, it's interesting. Yeah, that's kind of scary. That's that's uh, that's pretty nineteen eighty four. Yep. <laughs> that's interesting. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I. It is really an interesting question. Like, what what would be done? Uh, without, I mean, obviously, I think that is that's 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 way too far, right? That it is nice to have systems in place to be like, yeah, people who can stay home, stay home, and but but at the same time, like that's that's really too far. Like, how how far can you go to stop something like that? That's a that's an interesting question, and and I I don't know what I, you know what yeah what would be done in 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 Kapistan? I guess that's a I guess it's a it, that that violates the nap if you if you give somebody a virus does that yeah. is that virus your property once it once well, it's <laughs> entered well I, I think it's kind of i think it's kind of boils down well like i said i'm not i'm not a napper so um but i, I do think that if you if you have a virus and you're well and you know that you have the virus and you spread it knowingly then yeah that's that's an act of terrorism that's an act of uh, aggression sure. or whatever um but if you don't know, which most people don't know because the, I mean, because if you have the flu, right, if you catch the flu, you have a day about a contagiousness and then you get sick and then you're not contagious anymore. And while you're sick, you don't have the contagious, but that's only one day. Whereas, whereas delicious Negro Modelo, um, you know, it could be anywhere from four to 19 days where you have no symptoms. You're just enjoying delicious Negro Modelo <laughs> and spreading the love everywhere else. Uh, and you just don't know. Um, right. So how, how 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 could you do that without saying you would have to go like okay, we need to have rules enforcing like social distancing um, because we don't want people you know drinking delicious Negro Modelo while driving right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We don't want people de- drinking delicious Negro Modelo while driving uh, on the roads, right? Uh, my roads, etc. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like we would have, to, there would have to be like rules saying like, okay, in the, you know, the unlikely and rare scenario that we have a global, you know, party day where everyone's drinking delicious Negro Modelo, we need to, you know, we have to, you have to close your businesses during these particular hours. Or you can only have so many things in. If you're a restaurant, you can only do you know pick up or to go to go and, and deliveries. Um, you know, if you're not essential, if you're if you're having a birthday bash, you can cancel it. If you're having a barbecue, you cancel that, uh, and then just reschedule it for later. And sure, it's going to suck, but yeah. And you know, you can operate charities and stuff to help with people who are going to be out of work in that time. I think that that's possible, and it possibly, and it wouldn't help. I mean, it, excuse me, it would help if you know we didn't have to pay like forty percent of our income uh, God. To, to, the, to the government <laughs> for, for things, uh, and then you know those things, and then buying things that are taxed, which have like three layers of taxes. You got like social security tax and corporate income tax, and all these other taxes that are just compounding on it. Uh, yeah, that doesn't help either. Uh, but you know, all all things considered, I think it it'd be a whole lot better of a system, and we wouldn't have things like holding people indefinitely, you know, God. without trial. Um, you know, we wouldn't have like spy programs and stuff, and making sure that people are, you know, whatever, and families could drive around in their car. Which like in in uh, you know in in London, you know, where you have to have a license for everything. There was this video of like a, a group of people driving home somewhere, and he was like, "I'm going to drop these people off." And they're like, well, no, no, you can't drive together. You can't carpool uh, because of the coronavirus. So all these people need to get out and walk around, rock home, uh, and then you need to drive them home. And it's like, well, I'm already in the car with them. If, we, if one of us got it, we all have it now. So might as well just let me drive these people home and give me a fine. And they're like, no, no, you need to get these people out of your car. It's like, Jesus, what is happening? Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, that's just crazy. You're going to make them walk, right? And... uh and spread it further right and touch things and cough on things and breathe on things that's you know a lot of those things are going to be metal and that's where delicious delicious negro modelo stays nice and cold is on metal (laughs) um 
<laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it, and like uh, to me, it, I just don't. I, I get like some people are skeptical. I understand being skeptical of mainstream narratives, but um, it just to me it seems so. Like I want. I just want to be careful. You know. I just want to mm-hmm. be careful if like because in case I did get it, like I'm not not that concerned about my own health i'm you know even i I smoke and that's the worst thing that i do to my lungs you know and that's not i'm I'm, uh, not not as much as a lot of people do and i so i don't think i'm i don't think i'm at risk but i i'm just trying to be careful so i don't pass it on to other people so when i go into town i wear a mask i even put gloves on and and i spray stuff down with sanitization spray uh, but i see like almost everybody else that is there at the grocery store they're picking up things with their bare hands they don't they don't you know the the people working have gloves on at least, but uh, yeah, I'm just thinking like, oh man, you know, we probably all have it now, but we just have to wait 19 days, <laughs> or so, <laughs> you know, some of us won't even know, right? And most of us wouldn't know, right? Because it's I guess a lot of people are asymptomatic. So yeah, I, don't, I think I, they I said don't know what... that uh, the first sign that you've enjoyed some delicious, delicious Negro Modelo is your inability to taste delicious, delicious Negro Modelo <laughs> or be able to smell delicious Negro Negro Modelo, like. The, you lose the, the, those two things, uh, which is kind of concerning because my dad was like telling me like, like yeah, like you know my mom cooked me something earlier and it just didn't taste right, and you know I, I made something earlier and that didn't taste right either, and I was like, oh no, don't tell me you have it. Oh uh, yeah, gosh, that's the first sign. Oh, it's, that's kind of, I didn't know that that was a. Oh, that's terrible. That's such a. I I love being able to taste. <laughs> I, I don't think things, it's right? gone permanently. Oh, I man. think it's just a temporary cool. thing, you know, unless you die with okay. it. Interesting, yeah, interesting. So it's in, I've looked into a little bit about like what does uh, what does it look like, you know? And uh, it seems like it's a very it's it, it's it's bad because of the way it's shaped, you know, and the way that it it works. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very interesting. I guess that makes sense. It like fills in like different holes, like in your lungs or in your nasal cavity, probably that that probably blocks you from being able to eat or being able to taste or smell those those kind of fine particles because that's what that is right tasting and smelling is just like getting those little hints of yeah i think i think it's just a symptom i'm not i'm phenols. not exactly sure that's attacking your actual yeah. thing i think it's just okay okay inhibiting your interest i wonder I mean, why like, it would do that because i mean like if you have a cold it's sort of the same thing happens right you start losing your ability I to suppose, taste yeah. and smell um but you know it, it comes back once your cold is over I think it's just yeah. kind of like that. I don't think it's uh, like as severe as like, well, you lost it forever. You, you know, you can't taste or, you know, smell anything from now on. I don't think it's that, <laughs> it's that crazy yet. Yeah, that would, uh, yeah, that'd be pretty fucking bad. Yeah. I mean, if it was the case, then I, I would definitely not be drinking delicious, delicious Negro Modelo. <laughs> and I would yeah. prefer one of their competitors, which obviously their competitors do do that. So not a fan of those. Uh, delicious Negro Modelo has none of that stuff. None of that stuff. It's It's just delicious and you should enjoy it. <laughs> and you should you should love everything the government does to you because of it, because uh, you know I, we don't want to we, we don't we don't question the, what the government says because they're always right. I believe everything that they say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, it's been a while since we talked. I, I remember when we first did an episode, we were both like moral nihilists, uh, and we've both yeah. kind of changed from then. Where ha- where have you gone since then? Since we can get into some oh, kind man. of more nerdy <laughs> topics now, yeah, man, that's you know, I, I've kind of, I, I still would call myself a consequentialist in the sense that you know, I, I believe that it's, um, you know, what happens. Uh, I don't, I don't believe in a, a consistent moral law. I don't think that that makes sense. I, I'm still kind of there, but I guess that I've kind of, I've decided what. I guess maybe I don't know. I guess I'm I'm I think about the patterns of things of like how, how will you know what the consequences of an action will be, and uh, I think I've gotten a little bit more um, I don't know maybe uh, judgmental or, or particular about some things and and I guess in the case of like I don't know I, I'm trying to like, it's hard to paint because like uh, obviously I don't want to force anybody to do what I want but I do believe that you know eating unhealthily like eating food well because i I, i'm I'm trying to structure like i i think that that's not the right thing to do because it has poor consequences but i do it anyway um so like 
I'm becoming a little bit more particular about how I would like to live my life, and I'm, I'm developing some of those those habits and patterns that I think have good consequences. Um, but that's that's about as much as I think about philosophy right now. Is like, a, what what do these things actually do for myself and my life? Um, but I'm otherwise I'm kind of the same uh, philosophically. Like I I, I think things. Uh, matter as far as like how, how you feel about it <laughs> and uh um then you're a subjectivist and you don't believe truth is real right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I suppose, right? yeah I, I was just running into some of those people earlier today and i'm just like oh my god this is so infuriating yeah it, it, well because it's like obviously there's a there's an objective reality and it matters right mm-hmm. to like what you do will lead to consequences right and that's that's what i believe i guess <laughs> yeah so i mean like I <laughs> that's think, very simple yeah i think people have like values that they've held especially in the west like they, there's a lot of overlapping ones uh and I, and I kind of associate with those types of people and i'm pretty sure that if i associate with those types of people in real life and in Kapistan, we would say like okay there, but there's objective ways to tell like how to achieve these goals like we don't like murder we don't think theft is a good thing uh we should we should avoid those things because it's kind of productive and it has bad outcomes you know, like what's the best way to solving these problems um you know i think there's objective truths to those but i don't think that you can say like well therefore it's like objectively moral the system that i have uh, and everybody should follow it no matter where they are in the world like, it's like no, i don't know about that um i just think that that's that's the best way of getting along i don't think that therefore it's objective morality and everybody ought to to follow it i don't know i don't agree with that <laughs> yeah yeah but one of the things I've been thinking about are like those variables of like when you do because because it's all context specific. It's specific for each individual. Like what it's for. I am, how do I? Yeah, I guess that that's. Sorry, I'm having trouble thinking about <laughs> how I want to articulate that. <laughs> but I've been trying to I've been trying to think of like what are the variables that go into making a decision and kind of deciding what the consequences were or uh will be and and it's a i think that's a it's a very hard thing to get into because that's the nice thing about the deontological point of view or that that purist kind of point of view or is that it's it's decided you know this yeah. is what's right and wrong and, and we don't really have to worry about making the decision uh and and that's nice and then and kind of that subjectivity idea then you can just decide whatever you want and that's easy right but it, it's it doesn't to me neither way really makes sense it's not quite right there's there's a balance there where it's you do kind of get to decide your values but they uh they they might not work if you're not in in line in line with reality you know what i mean yeah. if they're not following that kind of objective uh what's going on in the world cause and effect reality uh then it doesn't make sense and why would you use it yeah, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really help you. Oh, sure, it's easy. You don't have to think about it that much, but you know, <laughs> that, that makes life harder in a lot of ways, right? If you're not if you're not making an educated, uh, you know, reasoned decision. Yeah, but I mean, are I don't even think they're really because every time I talk to like a deontologist, like I'll tell them like, why should I follow your rules? Like, why ought I is adhere to these? And they're always like. Well, you know, like if you do, then, you know, good things will happen and, you know, we'll have anarchy land and you know, the government won't oppress you and, you know, everybody will be nice to each other and you don't have to worry about your bike getting stolen and, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about going to jail for intellectual property thing when you go to the go to the public library. And it's just like, OK, well, OK, those are those are great outcomes, but that's not a reason why, because you're, you're saying that you have these moral rules that I should follow regardless of the consequences, because we're not supposed to factor those in. Uh, but your reasoning is for the outcome of that. I mean, if it's if it's true that I should follow these things no matter what, shouldn't the consequences be like completely irrelevant? Like, well, yeah, yeah I mean, everything's going to be terrible, but it's the most moral way of of doing it. That that would be the right answer to that. Um, I just, I just, I think that if you scratch a deontologist, you get a consequentialist <laughs> every uh-huh. single time. And it's like, yeah, seriously. I, I can't, I, I can't ever get an answer from, from, from them. And when I do press them on that, I'd be like, well, like what if the outcomes were terrible? Would you still follow it? Then they'll be like, well, yeah, I would still follow it. Cause it's the most moral, 
but I don't think it's that's the case. And it's like, okay, well, why? Why do you, why should I follow it either way? And it's like, well, because the outcomes are great. It's like, well, we're we're back to square one. Why don't you just, why don't yeah. just be a consequentialist then? <laughs> <laughs> it's the consequences. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I guess like some of it has to do and maybe people don't take in reality like the or take into account the, you know, that your psychology really matters and the consequences on your psychology uh, are just as important as any other consequence. You know, like I don't want to I don't want to hurt other people partly because it's it, it, I don't feel good about that. You know, it makes me feel bad when I watch somebody else hurt. I don't necessarily know why that is. Is that a moral thing? I, I don't really think so. I think it's kind of like know, intuitionism it's, almost, I guess. Maybe, but I, I don't know. But I don't think that it's. Uh, I don't know exactly where that comes from. If that's like a psychological, it's some sort of psychological thing that's bred into people, right? We don't want to hurt others for. And I don't think it's just social. I don't think it's just that we've been taught in this in our own culture. I think it has to do with like some empathy that that people have, and not everybody does. But um, I think that 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 those are just as valuable consequences as like making money or. Um, I can't think of a, 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 another reason, but you know what I mean? Like that, those consequences do matter. So like the, even though, like I'm trying to, I'm trying to paint like, well, why is it such a good thing to do? Right. It's because it does fulfill some sort of psychological need to do it. And that's why you would do it. Even if the consequences weren't exactly what you would want, yeah. because there are, you're, you're missing that like, part of the consequences, you know, feeling good about your moral decisions. Uh, I think that's an important part of people's psyches yeah, well, so, yeah, like, it's, it's kind of rational. manipulation when you when you act in a manipulative way it, even if you don't directly feel bad um you do miss out there are consequences to that uh, in your relationships um uh, but part of you i think at least for me and maybe it's not true for other people but uh i feel bad you know I, there's part of me that's kind of like oh man you're doing this and it's in the back of my mind i'm like oh man maybe i shouldn't lie to people because then i'm Part of it is those other consequences, like oh, I got to dance around that that subject, and I can't can't be uh, myself around people. But that stuff really adds up and and it makes you feel bad, and that ends up being a a poor consequence. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's kind of it's also kind of like rational egoism, right? It's like, well, yeah, I mean, I can go around and treat everyone like dicks, and that's going to be good for a little bit because I'm going to be happy and I'm going to get what I want, and I can steal from people. But after a while, it, it all starts catching up with you. Like it, like people stop wanting to do business with you. They won't let you in the store so you can steal. Uh, you know, people don't want to hang out with you. People don't want to help you. You're just kind of left to your own devices, and you're just basically, you know, an atomist dying in the middle of the of the forest that no one cares about. Uh, that's not good. That's not yeah. really very beneficial. So I think in that sense, like it's in your best interest to help people along the way, uh, because if you don't, then everyone's going to hate you. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you should play by you know like everybody's rules, I guess. Uh, because if you know that makes them happy, then it'll benefit you in the long run. Because then people will be like, well, you know, this guy did take me down the street, you know, last week to uh, to get some food. You know, maybe I can, you know, help him light his cigarette or, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, protect him from this guy who wants to shoot him or something. You know. He seems like a good guy. He's been nice to me. He's done nice things for me. Um, you know, I'm going to reciprocate. I think you have to kind of factor that in. Uh, that's just basic. Yeah. Rational well, it, I, Right. And and it's a complicated calculation to make if you're going to be, and if you're going to try and do that, right? I feel like for most people, it's kind of, it is sort of intuitive, like how you treat other people. You do learn things that you pick up, but it's not like a calculated move every time you make, a decision right like it's not like we're going over oh what exactly will be the consequences it might be something that's kind of running in the background and maybe we do think about a few of those consequences but we, we never make a perfect decision right mm -hmm. so i think that you know it makes it, it that's where i think it gets interesting with consequentialism but i think that there's an actual <clears throat> to me why i like this idea is that there's 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 decisions to make rather than like trying to just follow the rules. It's like, you gotta, you do gotta think through it a bit. Yeah. And, uh, and in my experience, you know, from like, like, I don't know, like I've gotten, I've been getting into the Bible recently cause it's, it's interesting book to read, but, uh, I think people totally misunderstand like the Christians and, 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 uh, modern monotheists just totally, I think they misunderstand what, what's going on, you know, how, how inconsistent, the you know the rules are and and people are like oh well, you're taking it out of context and blah, blah, blah. like like and, but people bring this up that the bible is inconsistent but like 
to me, I think, yeah, that's what it should be, right? This guy's going based off of consequences, you know? Mm -hmm. It kind of seems like he's doing that, like, if you follow that story. And I, I think that... Uh, I think it's kind of weird that we we've painted this idea that like oh look at this religion it's so pure and and following like these these basic rules when really it's super complicated and uh and pretty bizarre you know like there's a lot of there's a lot of occult magic in the old testament yeah where they're sacrificing animals and stuff like like that was it was cool to do that then why isn't it cool to do that now why aren't the churches doing that shit you know <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Part of it is like that is the uh, is the consequences, right? Like mm -hmm. n now we eat a lot of those animals. Like they they didn't they used to eat them right a lot. That was part of their what they they lived off of. But uh, I believe that back then most of the diet was around wheat and bread and and veggies. Yep. Um. I, I don't know that entire, but like meat was just a hard thing to keep uh, stored. You know, it's it goes bad pretty quickly when you're in the heat. You can, if you're below fifty degrees, you can hold it for a while. But um, I don't think that was normally the case uh, in that in that region. You know. Yeah, I think they would hunt uh, and then bring the meat back, and they would all cook it all then and eat it right then, and then use all the things that they can save long term, like the leather and all that other stuff for long term storage. I think f some fats can store for a while. I don't know. I know whale yeah. fat you can try out and uh, keep forever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I guess that. Yeah, that's one way to do it and preserve and there and salt, right? You can salt down things and make yeah. jerky and dry it, but um, but it was difficult to do. So I don't think that meat was such a huge big part of their diet. But then it became more and more part of the diet even in medieval times and and further on. And uh, maybe it, those animals became more valuable, and that's why they stopped sacrificing them. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is, but. Uh, but I think about like what you're saying, like you you scratch a deontologist enough, and and you'll find the consequentialist. Yeah, like that's the same thing I see in in the religions. Like it's not, it's never as cut and dry as as people uh, seem to to make it out to be. You know, it's not just like turn the other cheek. You know, it's like sometimes you toss over the the bank tables. You know, or <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you got to get a little bit violent in in, in those situations, right? But uh. But it is, it's a complicated system of, of like, how do you make that decision? Uh, it's not just something like, all we do what the church says, all we do what God says. It's like, well, God said a whole lot of different things. Uh, you know, like, which one are you going to follow? You're going to follow which one brings the best consequences for the next moment, you know? Yep. <laughs> or, or whichever ones, you know, appeals to the modern sensibilities. Like, if you notice that, like, Back in the olden days, like the nuns would wear like these gowns that covered everything, and now you know, now they show their arms a little bit of leg. You know, they're not so those so drab. Like the older ones will still wear the like the more traditional ones, but the newer ones, you know, you know they they're, they're not they're not so uh, they don't cover everything now, and it's kind of like well okay, but it's like okay so now now if we're showing off um if we're showing off the legs of these nuns, it's like well isn't this just kind of like titillating people? Is this just trying to appeal to people to try to get more converts into the church? It's like, why don't we, why don't we just call it Satanism at this point? Cause that's all you're doing. You're just, you're just, if we're just going to change the rules to whatever you want. And, and if that's the definition of Satanism, why not just call it by its rightful name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> just embrace it. <laughs> yeah. You know, that is interesting, and I, one of the things I've been bringing up, like in this kind of regard to to people, is why, like in in the story of Adam and Eve, uh, she eats the apples. She just she gets scared. They get both get scared about like, oh, we're naked. We need to put on clothes. And then God shows up, and he's like, hey, why why are you guys wearing clothes? Like I like you're afraid. I think I told you like don't cover yourselves or something. And and uh, they're like, oh, we thought you would be worried about it. Like and got scared. And he's like, no, nah, I don't really care. But I care that you're wearing clothes, so get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and he kicks him out, right? But like th that's one of the things that that upset God, and yet they're so particular about like Catholics and and, and Christians and and all you know Muslims too. And why are they so particular about everybody being covered up? You know, isn't that the thing? Isn't that where human beings went wrong in the first place? Yeah. And now you're telling us we're all sinners and we're not supposed to sin, but then you're like committing part of the original sin. That's Satanism, dude. That's the snakes, right? They're, they're trying to get you to wear clothes, man. Wait a minute. That's the Who wrote this damn book? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, uh, one of the things that got me to be an atheist was just reading the Bible. Like, I just had some questions. My pastor couldn't answer those questions. And by the way, like, every time I mention that, like, I get, like, some Christians going, like, well, what questions do you have? I'll answer. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't remember anymore. Like, this was 20 or some odd years ago. This is this is old, old, old stuff. Um, <laughs> so I don't remember what those questions were. And because I couldn't get a direct answer, I just read the Bible. I was like, well, maybe if I read the Bible, it'll... it'll curve this and I got like halfway through it and I was like this is stupid and then I finished it and I was like yeah this, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense this is just a bunch of nuttery uh, I'm out <laughs> I'm just completely yeah. out uh, and I haven't looked back since um, yeah Satanic Bible is an interesting read if you're looking into that you should probably check that out too um, yeah I've I've uh, I've never read the actual I've never had like that book but I, I've read parts of it and and it seemed <laughs> it seemed more reasonable than the the Ten Commandments yeah I think, you know and go ahead no I was gonna say that the but part of my problem with it is is people are like if you want to take it and look at it as like how a, a, the story of this people the Jewish people kind of grew and through history and had their relationship with their faith. It's an interesting thing to read, but when you're trying to like, uh, if you're trying to like force or trying to um, stretch those ideas onto now, it, it doesn't really make that much sense because you're talking about a totally different cultural situation, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where I have the issues. Really, it's like like it, it, this is a consequentialist religion, and my <laughs> I'm looking at it. You're going based off of like how do you spread your religion and how do you stay powerful? How do you uh, like the the whole deal with the Jews have with uh, the the Hebrews have with God in that story is how do we uh, how do we be, rise to power you know how do we make our descendants uh, plentiful uh, that's their game that's what they that's the whole deal Moses made um, but then we try to like we're trying to do exactly what they were doing and it's like that's the things situations have changed just like through that Bible through that story all of these things changed. Um, it's always changing. That's all it is. Like we're always trying to figure out what's the best thing to do. And that's, the, I think kind of this part of the point of this life, at least, or it's the big theme that seems to be happening. It's like, Oh, we all got to decide what are, <laughs> what are we going to do next? Right? Like that to me is like, that's the big theme. And to say like something like Jesus Christ is a theme, uh, does not make sense to me. And, and I think once you start exploring other cultures, it, you realize that that's just not true because, the people you are concerned about all these heathens in, in Vietnam and Africa, they're like, Oh, we got to go save them. A lot of them don't care. Mm -hmm. you know? And then once you get kind of past that and you understand like, Oh man, it, I guess I don't really care about that whole like heaven hell thing because it, you know, it doesn't really seem to apply to the rest of the world. You know, they're not really concerned about it. And if other people aren't concerned about it, like, how do we know it's there? You know what I mean? You get into weird, weird, cons like weird questions, but, um, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, doesn't make sense to me either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, like I, I, there, I, I have a lot of like Christian listeners to the show. Um, there's even one who refers to himself in various things. I'm not going to mention him by name, but uh, he uses the title like Jesus Freak and a lot of the kind of screen handles that he has on various names. <laughs> uh, it, well, Jesus Freak is at least in the name. It's not the whole name, but anyways. Um, so I mean, like, I do have Christian listeners, and and they kind of appreciate like my my aspect my <laughs> my view on this stuff. But so I don't know. Um, I, it's just kind of like I guess we just disagree <laughs> on that, and you know we kind of have some. I think the agreements that I do have, you know, that the the non aggression principle is flawed, uh, at least in terms of um, it being like an axiom that you have to follow no matter what. I think we do, we both agree that that's not particularly useful uh, on some disagreements on Austrian stuff. Um, some disagreements on libertarians on other things as well. Like the whole, uh, I mean, one of the things that's been bugging me a lot lately is I still kind of keep seeing this meme that like, well, corporations have, you know, this limited liability thing that wouldn't exist without the state. And I know even Stefan Kinsella, who's an Austrian, uh, who is a napper, um, who's a big fan of Hoppe and argumentation ethics and all that stuff, which I have disagreements on him with that. But I mean, like he's, he's even talked about like, I don't see why, like, you couldn't have like you know limited liability in an anarcho-capitalist society, and it's like okay, like I don't yeah. Know. So yeah, I, 
that's interesting. I haven't thought about that. Like, how would you do that in a, in an anarcho capitalist? Well, society? I mean, li- all, I mean, I guess- the, the limited liability. All it really does is say that you can't hold sh- shareholders or the employees of a company like directly responsible for what the actions of other people in the company do. So, I mean, like, right. if I if I buy shares in BP Oil, right? Am I morally like culpable for them for the horizon? Do you know disaster? Like, no. Why, why would you hold me personally responsible? Sure, I should probably lose money when their stock prices fall, but I should lose money if their stock prices fall for, you know, just them doing bad business that's, you know, that's not unethical or something. Um, yeah. And if I'm an employee of BP, like if I just work at the, you know, gas station for BP, you know, gas company or you know, the, the gas station, uh, why should I, be, you know, be held morally culpable for, you know, the things that another division did? Like, you, you can't have... You can't. I sh- shouldn't be able to sue me or get me in trouble because other people in the comp- company uh, does something bad. If I'm just a shareholder or, or you know a, a different type of employee, now if I'm responsible for that, then m- yeah, maybe. Um, but again, that should that should be that should be the the, the organization's fault, not mine. Um, at most, I should be penalized. Man, th- my allergies are forgetting to me. I don't have delicious mode- Negro Modella. I should go buy some. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> ah, God, I hate spring. I hate it. It's the worst. It yes. is the worst. <laughs> it really is, man. I can't stand. I, I like. Luckily, it's, it rains here. Really, that's a big difference. Probably down where you are too. Is luckily it, it, it's pretty humid here, and it will, you know, knock the pollen out of the sky a little bit, right? Yeah. But uh, when it's a nice breezy day, oh man, I can just like you just take one whiff and you just get that sting in your nose like oh man i'm just gonna fucking sneeze all day today yep oh, i hate it i hate it i hate mm. it i hate it <laughs> and it's yeah it's, it's been raining a lot here but not lately and because it hasn't been raining my my allergies are just like ah oh, we're gonna make your life a living hell and you know I'm, I'm i'm not completely uh one but like i do have like hypochondriatic tendencies where i think i have everything that's around so i wake up and my nose like i'm all like stuffy and shitty and i got a headache and i'm just like oh please tell me i don't have corona oh god <laughs> i mean because i want delicious negro modello instead um <laughs> So yeah, it's just like, uh, like oh please don't tell me I have that. Oh please don't like I hate it. I hate everything about it. It's the worst yeah, time of terrible... year for this to happen. I know, right? That's just uh, that's what's scary about it. It's kind of it's frustrating because you're like, God damn it, am I uh, am I getting this thing or is it just the flu or is it just my allergies or is it you know? Is, is it really tickets to the Backstreet Boys reunion concert? <laughs> yeah. As the Grums put it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think we should start wrapping things up here. Uh, do you want to pl- plug your Perfect. new stuff? Oh, by the way, you were on School Sucks not too long ago. How did that go? I have not got a chance to listen to that. Yeah, it was good. It was a it was a good conversation. Um, uh, one of the things I'm doing with this uh, now that we've been kind of put on that was a little bit before quarantine uh, started. Uh, I mean, being delicious more serious. negro negro modello. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we would never talk about that really garbage especial stuff extra. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> but before before people it was that people were really trying to social distance um i i got the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh uh foraging goods and i was going to try and teach people i was going to try and do some like tours out in the woods and say hey i can show you some of the edible plants because i know a lot about it um but brett brett uh Vinat had me come on the school sucks to talk a bit about some of the the basic skills of uh foraging your own food um yeah, hot tip. It, it it's difficult to try to get your proteins and and macronutrients. You know, it's hard to get carbs and proteins or fats from the wild. So it's if you're gonna try to be prepared for food shortages, uh, f- food source. I don't know if I said that right. Shortages. Food shortages. <laughs> yeah. God. Who um, learned you how to spoke? <laughs> I know, man. I dropped out of school. I didn't learn. I didn't learn <laughs> things. Uh, um, uh, it's best we to store your out, own your rice anyway. out. That's right. <laughs> it rose out. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I was just, uh, store rice, store whatever. But uh, if you're looking for things that can uh, bring a little bit more diversity of flavor and, and uh, micronutrients, learn how to forage is a real fun thing to do. Uh, if you're into it, you can definitely send me a message on Facebook or, or if you can find my email. Or, uh, I don't really have a phone number out there right now. Um, 
hit me up because uh, that's what I'm trying to offer people in, in this kind of time because it's uh, it's a fun thing to do when you if you if you have the access to space I don't I don't know what you can find in around uh, Las Vegas there but uh, um, <laughs> there's probably some things out and about there's like could... a mushroom that grows here natively and that's about it I forget what it's called is it one of those ones that like grows underground and and like pops up I, I think I've heard about it yeah they only like last for a day or something like that what are they called yeah desert yeah. Um... Oh, it's gonna drive me nuts. I think I think they're uh, an agaricus or a, oh, I can't remember the other genus, but it's something like that. I think that's what they are. Let's see, mushrooms native to Nevada, spring mushrooms, fall fungi of the Sierra Nevada. No, not the Sierra Nevadas. Yeah, you, well, Sierra Nevada. I would also like to point out is a very delicious uh, beer. Um, <laughs> Uh, I can't remember what they're called. They they kind of look kind of like they're gray, and they look kind of like sad and like raggy. Um, and they have like a like a like, like a bullet shaped cap, and they're kind of like shaggy. I forget what they're called, but um, yeah, uh, like shaggy mane. Edible. Yeah, there we go, shaggy mane. That's what they're called. I think they're yeah, called shaggy mane. A, that's a coconut species. Yeah, yeah, those are good. Uh, I believe that. I bet they do grow uh, down there because they. They, they can be pretty hardy, but they yeah, in the rain and in yep, the sun, true. they just they just melt. Yep. Like they turn black and weird. It's yeah, just gooey. Oh yeah. But I've had them once. I've I've eaten them once. Eaten them once, and they're they're pretty tasty. Okay. Oh. Well, if, if I see one, I, I, it's rare that I see them anymore. Um, yeah. If I see because it's been, we've been having a lot of rain here in in uh, Nevada, but uh. I haven't tried those and I'm still trying to get my hands on like a fresh lion's mane, which uh, someone told me that there's a store around here that sells it, but I'm not going to go right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to wait until everyone's done drinking delicious Negro Modelo before I uh, go <laughs> start trying to go to weird places and shops to try to find like weird mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I even know till... the last time I went to space from mushrooms. Oh, yeah. so long yeah <laughs> but you're going to space like, it's weird like once once you go to space right uh the, the your will to do it again like drops oh, yeah. a little bit so oh, the for sure. you, yeah the more you do it the like the more you're like man i really appreciate that uh, i'm gonna wait another two weeks you know an extra two weeks more than i would normally do it uh, yeah. to do it again and then after a while you're just kind of like I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, it turns into a few years, you know. Yeah, and I, now, I'm, now I'm getting the kind of itch to go like, oh, man, it wouldn't be nice to go to space. And I'm sure if I did it again, I'd be like, I'm good for another five years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's legit. Like when I first started eating those, like I always thought, oh, oh man, these guys are all just pussies. You know, they're not gonna, they don't want to keep all these psychonauts that want to keep doing it. Yeah. And uh, and then and then I had some, you know, uh, large doses and some crazy experiences went off to space. And uh, yeah, you know, it's like, man. I've experienced that. Do I really got to go back there again? I I kind of like life. <laughs> it's kind of like NASA with the moon. Like, they want to go there all the time, and then it's like, yeah, we're done. <laughs> yeah, we got there. We got cool. There. We it out. <laughs> Went to space. Jumped around in zero gravity. We're good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, more, the more I did it, like, I was doing it, like, every week, and then it turned into every two weeks, and then it turned into every month, and then it turned into yep. every two months, and then it was like... I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, whatever. Yeah, I try little bits. I don't usually do large, large uh, doses anymore. But uh, it's yeah, it's every few months now for me where I just do a little bit, and and it's fun. But like, yeah, I don't. I, I've got access to them. I know where they grow and stuff. But I, yeah, man, I don't know. It it changes. You, you just don't don't desire it as much. Yep. So, um, yakking with Nick. What is the website? It is just yakin dot libsyn dot com. Yeah, J U S T Y A K K I N. Um, and if you look up uh, yakin with Nick or uh, Nick's with Yak or something, you, you'll find something yeah. like that. You'll find the sites I have. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Uh, yeah. you got, tw you got the Twitters. You don't Twitters, do you? No, I don't tweet. I'm a, I'm on Instagram a little bit right now, uh, at Nick Hazy and, uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, quite often now. Um, yeah, I'm been, a been 
<laughs> yeah, and I was just like, <laughs> after, I, after I, yeah, after I got off, I was just like, how am I going to get a hold of Nick to do a show? And I was like, oh, fuck it, I just have to get on Facebook. And I was like, maybe uh, if I create another account, uh, uh, and I and I tried to add you on an, another account, and you didn't probably didn't recognize me. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll just get on my uh, account and just hop on there and ask him. That's <laughs> probably and right. Then I, yeah. And then I went on there and I was like, oh, he already asked me. Oh, cool, yeah, let's, let's do this. <laughs> that's that's funny. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I uh, I don't I don't add the random libertarians as much anymore. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. if I see that you have like if you have mutual friends with with uh, with several people people that i know i'm like mm, I, yeah. don't, I don't i don't actually know you then yeah i didn't have any mutuals and my my picture was like an ancap flag i think oh yeah yeah no it gets a quick delete yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like oh, before i quit like that, that was one of the things that got me is if your name was like lysander or von mises <laughs> or rothbard or anything like that i was just like nap I already know where that's going to go, and I'm not interested. Just another NAP fight that's that goes nowhere. Like, oh, you don't agree with the NAP, then you're not a libertarian. Okay, then I'm not a libertarian. <laughs> Whatever. Yep, Whatever sure. you want to call me, I don't care. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so Facebook, no twatters. Uh, you still podcasting, so that's good. Well, you're back to podcasting. Yeah, I'm gonna try and keep it up. We'll see. I'm not. I, I'm not gonna make any promises about being consistent, but uh, um, I've got ideas and stuff to talk about right now. So I'm gonna try and try and put them into some uh, easy to follow formats for me to read out to people online. Yeah, you should uh, should do a book review on the uh, the other good book. Oh uh, yeah, do 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 a, do do a review on both good books. Like say, like you know, I've read both sides now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That is a good idea. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be good, Duffy. All right, man. Uh, Hail Satan and, and uh, worms. <laughs> worms taking it back. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? So um, we actually forgot to record the segment where we're going to do um, Amazon purchases, uh, which might have been a good thing because uh, looking at it now, uh, we had like a, a purchase in February for the, of this year and that was it. But we did have a lot of purchases going back uh, December and onward. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, check from December 4th to uh, February 29th, which was our last purchase. I go down some of it. So someone bought Nemesis, the journal, uh, the Jovalivian versus the liberal model of human orders, which is a book, uh, I guess, critical of liberalism. It's kind of a, um, what's the word? Kind of neo absolutist, uh, kind of uh, the type uh, book, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, we have the myth of the eternal return, cosmos and history, mythos, Princeton. Bullion series and world mythology. Um, I guess this is uh, the founding work. Uh, the founding work of history of religion secured in North American reputation of the Roman blah 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 something empire, uh, mm, making reference to an astonishing number of cultures and drawing on scholarship published no fewer than half a dozen uh, in half a dozen European languages. Interesting. We got two Dungeons Dragons book. We got the Player's Handbook and the Dungeon Master's Guide. Uh, so it looks like someone likes to uh, play a little D and D, um, which you should probably buy a, a pair of dice using our, our store code. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> pair of dice. Is it just a pair of dice? I think it's like a whole like fistful of die. Um, Smart Guard, powered by Guardsmen. Uh, Five-year DOP furniture plan. So someone bought some furniture. Mm? So Smart Guard is definitely kind of like a, a protective coating. Ah, and it's a protective coating for a gaming office chair, uh, which I do want. This is a Hormel gaming office chair. High back computer chair, PU, leather desk chair, PC racing executive ergonomic adjustable swivel task chair with headrest and lumbar support white. Um... I wonder how you know, like the, the marketing manager behind uh, the the names of these products are just 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 amazing. Uh, 
uh, hat, hat tip to all of them. So, wooden beard comb in case, dual action, fine, coarse teeth, perfect for use with bomb and oil, bombs and oils. Top pocket comb for beards and mustaches by Viking Revolution. So someone's got some uh, whiskers they need to uh, to comb. We've got an HDMI to VGA platinum, uh, platinum, gold plated. Sorry, HDMI uh, adapter. Um, so someone's connecting up some retro hardware to uh, HDMI. Uh, we got some green dot. What is this? Green dot Wi-Fi smart plug mini smart home power control socket. Uh, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. This is not a good thing to buy. Do not have your house smartly Wi-Fi or s smart connected to Wi-Fi. That's that's a recipe for disaster. Uh, and then uh, a watch repair kit which looks interesting. So someone's going to do some repair on some watches. It looks like though it's not for like opening up the watch itself, though there are stuff. Well, I guess it is. Yeah, there is. There is some definite, uh, some timepiece repair type stuff in this thing as well as, uh, uh, what are those things? Those little hinges that go that everybody loses all the time. Yeah. All kinds of different stuff. So, uh, so someone's uh, going to fix their watch. Uh, let's go back a little bit further. Let's go back because we haven't done this in a while. Let's go back to September to was it December fourth? So let's do December third. Do 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 do. What else we got? I know there was a lot of stuff. Oh, well, let's try October first. Let's just leave it there in October to then. GE polarized handy plug. Uh, so I guess this is one of those kind of plugs that you plug into a light socket that allows you to have, uh, you know, power, so you got like a, like a two prong, uh, outlet. It's kind of, uh, rigging things to, uh, if you, if you need, uh, some, an extra power source. And then of course you have a prime 12 foot three outlet indoor cord, kind of like an extension cord. Okay. I should probably step, step skip these kind of, uh benign things we got a i got like a metal rack that's the one for for shelving um and we have some wheels for those shelvings got some running shoes sakomi men's size 11 running shoe 25 bucks not bad for a pair of shoes uh, let me know how those work out uh a tau tronics led floor lamp brightness level five or five brightness levels and three colors Ooh, Little rgb lighting i guess Mold killer, yes, uh, fungicide. High vis visibility black vest. This looks like uh, someone's doing some uh, security work. Uh, <laughs> or, I don't know, something like that, just to want to be visible at night. Um, someone got a, uh, a renewed Linksys MaxStream AC2200 AC uh, tri-band Wi-Fi router. Looks like a little pineapple. It's pretty badass, actually. A uh, two-pack of Galaxy Tab uh, screen protectors. Nice. And a Galaxy Tab case. Did they actually get a Galaxy Tab? No. I think someone bought the Galaxy Tab and then moved on. So someone got a, uh, a bunch of security cameras for their house. Very nice. Waze, wall, Waze Cam Wall Mount Bracket 360 Degrees Protective Adjustment. Uh, a USB, what is this? Carbon fiber retractable S S S D S D A enclosure. Uh, so someone's going to um, do some high capacity storage on USB. Very nice. What else we got here? Uh, Galaxy Tab, another Galaxy Cab ta Tab case. I guess they weren't happy with the previous one, or they weren't happy with this one. A, uh, a console table for their house so they can uh, put stuff, uh, put their keys on, I guess. A, a two-pack multi-USB charger cable, retractable four-foot, three-in-one multiple fast charging cord. And uh, this is another charging cord. Yeah, another charging cord. So if you want us to read off stuff, we're probably going to do this again next month. Uh, just go to shop.lolberts.com. And uh, you can shop at Amazon, and it doesn't cost you a thing to do it. And uh, whatever we, we don't see what you buy. So if you want to buy stuff in confidentiality, we will see what you buy, just not who bought it. Uh, so if you uh, want to get us to read off some degenerate ass shit or 
watch our us react to some whatever thing, just just buy it. <laughs> Shop at uh, and then we'll do it there. Until next time, worms. <laughs>